to this episode of A History of the Navy in 100 Objects, presented by the United States Naval Academy Museum. Today, we are looking at a small identification plate from a Japanese Zero used during World War II. Although it seems simply utilitarian, this ID plate tells a story about the differences in training and tactics used by the Japanese and the United States in training and utilizing their pilots. We are joined by the former director of the museum, Dr. Scott Harmon, for his insight into the story behind this object. This time we're looking at a very small identification plate. Uh, you can see it up here, a small blue plate with a propeller and an engine. This comes from a Japanese aircraft. And what it brings to mind is the difference in training philosophies of the United States Navy and the Japanese Navy during World War II. Uh, Japanese naval aviators had had years of experience in combat before uh, the United States opened the war. Uh, when we got into the war, uh, Japanese had the best naval aviators in the world. They had the best fighter plane, the, the Zero. Uh, their pilots were experienced in combat and uh, the Americans could not compete. But as the war went on, uh, the attrition of the Japanese pilots uh, got to be tremendous. The Battle of the Philippine Sea, uh, some uh, 430, I believe it was, uh, Japanese aircraft were shot down. And every time a Japanese pilot was lost, there was not really a replacement, a trained replacement for that pilot. The practice of the Japanese uh, naval aviation was to keep the experienced pilots on the front line as long as they survived. Uh, in the American Navy, experienced pilots went back to Pensacola and other training bases to help train a new generation of pilots. So there was a, a turnover. Uh, the trained pilots, experienced pilots could pass on their lessons to a new generation of American pilots, and we kept improving uh, the level of our pilots where the Japanese pilots uh, deteriorated. At the end of the war, the last uh, major battle, uh, the Battle of the Leyte Gulf, Japanese carriers, the remaining carriers, had very few qualified pilots, and part of this resulted in the fact that the Japanese instituted the kamikaze tactic. You did not need a great deal of training to take an airplane off and steer it and try and dive it into a ship. Uh, this was a consequence of the lack of trained pilots remaining in the Japanese Navy. Where American pilots got better and better, the Japanese naval aviation continued to decline until the end of the war there were virtually no pilots and aircraft left. Each object in the museum tells a similar story and represents ideals and values bigger than itself. In this case, this identification plate points to the success of U.S. naval aviation in World War II as a direct result of U.S. training tactics and emphasis on turning over the skills to the next generation of warfighters. Training and turnover continue to be integral to a successful Navy team and are the main focus of Navy leadership today. We hope that you join us soon at the Naval Academy Museum to see this object and many more. Come visit us in Annapolis, Maryland to learn the bigger lessons behind an object like this one. Join us next week for more from the history of the Navy in 100 Objects.